These from Havana, Mr. Armstrong, just to give to my friends. You know, I could make you such a big man in this section that you could afford to hand out fine cigars yourself. Thank you, Brother Holden. Thank you, Carmen. Now, uh, how many votes would you say you controlled? Well, I expect I could get my people to vote for anybody that showed them some kind of material benefits from this here emancipation. <laughs> well, I can take care of that. Here are some practical benefits you can distribute where they will get votes, huh? Ain't nothing practical about this Confederate money, Mr. Holden. Even the field hands know it is no good. You can tell them that I say it's good. I'm the adjutant general commanding this military district until the election. Yes, sir. Your servant, sir. Well, Tucker, how are tax collections today? Very good, sir. Troop A brought in 2,000, half of it in greenbacks. Oh. The troop collected 1,000 in Confederate money. Just forget these greenbacks. Yes, sir. You know what to do with them? Your personal account. Yes. Look here, Tucker. You'd better not keep a record of our business. Someone may see that book. Not a chance, General. I'll show you. I had this put in while you were up north. Who is it? Captain Hayes, sir. Just a minute. What is it, Hayes? I've got a new recruit, sir. Bring him in. Adjutant, this is Bull Horrell. Well, Horrell. You know, we pick our troopers carefully. What's your record? Here's the rules of the troopers. Read it and I'll swear you in. What's the matter, can't you read? No, sir. But I can count. <laughs> You'll do. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to obey the regulations of the state troopers? Yes, sir. That's all. Get your equipment from the supply sergeant. Yes, sir. There's the sort of a man we need to collect taxes from these rebels. Collecting is getting harder every day. They all claim they have no money. 
What are you going to do? Take their horses and cattle. Reconstruction won't last forever, Hayes. If we don't make our fortunes now. Come in. What is it? Troop B is returning, sir. There's been more trouble. ambushed on the Terry plantation. That's the second time this week. Yes, sir. Any orders? No orders, Lieutenant. Take care of your men. We've got to do something about these bushwhackers. In good time, Captain. But this is armed rebellion. Of course. That's what I've been waiting for. Now I shall be forced to take extreme measures. martial law as long as you're in a state of armed rebellion and you'll pay for it too you mean you're going to tax us to pay troops to take our property our lives yes five hundred dollars a day for maintaining law and order talking about, John. Maybe I should have stayed at home in Missouri. Don't go by this place. Well, you see my ranch. Something tells me the last four years ain't done no ranch no good. You're always moaning. Why don't you cheer up? We came through the war without a scratch, and now we're home, making a new start in life. Well, here's to the new start. It's old Jeff Pruitt, the surest shot in the country. I reckon he took a dislike to your union hat. You better get rid of it. It's done been got rid of. Guess he didn't recognize me. Hi, Uncle Jeff. Clear out. I don't want any dang yanks around here. He's kind of touchy. But he don't mean no harm. Just his way of being neighborly, huh? You know, Jed, I'm not a bit thirsty. Let's travel. Tell me, this is that wonderful home of yours. It was. Never mind, John. I'll put my shoulder to the wheel. In a week, you wouldn't know the old place. Like you won't have to bother fixing up your ranch. Oh, 
Over $400 taxes for one year. We're gonna have a talk with a man named Holden. Yes, Captain Ashley, I agree with you. It's unfortunate the tax rate should be so high, but then schools must be kept open, roads must be worked, and life and property must be protected. Isn't that so? Oh, well, when you put it that way, no thanks. I reckon every good citizen should stand his share. But there seem to be so few good citizens. Most of your neighbors are fighting law and order more bitterly than they fought the Union Army. Well, that doesn't sound like the folks I used to know. Aren't you putting it a bit strong, General? Look at that. You have a big problem here. Bigger than I realized. If there's anything we can do to help... You need money. I need men of your ability. Why don't you both enlist in the troopers? Thank you, sir, but I've had enough fight to last me and my grandchildren. We'd better think it over, sir. Your place adjoins the Terry Plantation, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Do you know the Terry family? Of course. I grew up with Colonel Terry's children. Then you can help reconstruction. I believe young Terry is the leader of the rebels. Dick? He always was headstrong. Maybe you could use your influence as a friend and a neighbor. Oh, I'm not so sure he'd listen to me. To my fighting against his side. I don't think you could convert him to the Union. That would be too much to expect. But you could persuade him to come in and have a friendly little chat with me, couldn't you? It might be the means of saving his life. I can't ask my troopers to be fired upon without firing back, you know. I'll see what I can do. You'll talk to him soon? We'll go by the Terry place on our way home. Thank you. Good day, gentlemen. Say, now I know why taxes are high in this neck of the woods. Are these Terry folks finicky, like Uncle Jeff? Finest folks in Texas, Jed. Dick's my best friend. His sister Virginia and I were to be married before the war. Yeah, Texas gals are anything like the men folk. My boy, the only use she's got for your heart is to cut it out and make jerky. With my hat caved in, do da, do da. I go back home with a pocket full of tin. Oh, do da day. Gwine to run all night, gwine to run all day. I'll bet my money on the bobtail nag. The Yanks is coming! On the bay. Mr. Daniel, the Yanks is coming! You'd better hide. What's the use? They know I'm here. They wouldn't be coming. But you can't be sure. Holden has his spies everywhere. Oh, Jenny, I can't hide like a rat in a hole every time the Yanks come here. Dick, you're all I have left. I just can't lose you two. Please, for me. Hello, everybody. Your work, Snowflake. How many times have I told you that those glasses must be washed and dried instantly? I declare, Snowflake, you're more nuisance around here than the Yankees. Yes. I sure am glad to see you back, Marshal John. Thank you, Snowflake.
worth waiting four years to see you again, Virginia. Please. I thought you'd be different now that times have changed. You haven't changed. I told you I had to take the side that I thought was right. There's no use going into all that again. Don't you remember old times, Virginia? What we thought of each other? The things we'd planned? Can't we start again now that the war is over? Over? Snowflake? Yes. Where's Mr. Dick? Well, I don't rightly know, sir. Well, I've got to see him as soon as I can. What do you want with Mr. Dick? I understand he's in some serious trouble with the authorities. Well, what do you want with him? Nothing. But General Holden wants to talk to him. If Dick will come along under my safe conduct as a friend, why... As a friend? That's what I said. When you were fighting openly against us, I could at least respect you. But when you come here to betray my brother... Snowflake, show the gentleman out. Yeah, sir. I wouldn't talk about the gentleman around here, sir. Miss Virginia and Marcy Dick ain't got no use for that murder. Boy, you're crazy. You must have been listening to field hand talk. Oh, no, sir. Uh, not this talk. Uh, he, he done had plenty of men shot in the back. What are you going to do now? I don't know. Why did you arrest those prisoners? They were carrying guns. Well, that's no crime in Texas. We demand a fair trial. Quiet, you. Adjutant's orders are bring in no prisoners without giving them a chance to escape. But, Captain, why let them get away? You'll learn. You know you won't have any chance with a court-martial. How would you like to escape? You don't mean it. Sure I do. These arrests are just a matter of form. You start riding like blazes. We'll give you a fair chance. Ready? Aim! All right, Bushwhacker. You're next. They're going to kill the youngster next. No, they're not. Ready? Take your time, Yanks. I'm not running away. Aim. Let's go down there and help him. Wait a minute. There's a better way we can help him. A couple of new recruits, sir. Oh, send them in. Didn't take us long to make up our minds, General. Well, so you're going to join up? Yes, sir. The reception we got at the Terry place sure convinced us of our duty. Yeah, we went out there to talk it over and <laughs> almost had to shoot it out. 
So now you understand what it means to be a trooper in this country. Yes. We do. Uh, you just listen, gentlemen. We'll prove we understand. Very well, then. I'll swear you in. Thank you, General. Glad to have you men with us. Well, what brings you back so soon, Captain Hayes? Not I am, sir. I had a retreat to save my command. Enemy present on both sides of the canyon. How many? About two dozen sharpshooters, sir. Why, the brush was alive with them. Captain Ashley and Mr. Calicut have just joined the troopers. Both valuable men in military experience. No doubt. With the regular army. You think you'll be any good at fighting bushwhackers? Maybe we won't. Me and John here, we never learned much about retreating. Is that so? Tell us what you would have done if you found yourself trapped like I was. Well, we licked that many troopers once, and I reckon we can do it again. What's that? Did I understand you to say troopers? <laughs> now, ain't that funny. Of course, I meant bushwhackers. All right, come on. Oh, uh, just a minute, Captain Hayes. Here's a list of tax dodgers to be rounded up tomorrow. You'd better check over those names with Captain Ashley. He uh, knows everyone in this county, and he can advise you how to handle these rebels. Yes, sir. We'll go over this list tonight. You won't have any trouble at Rio Blanca. It's owned by an old Spanish lady, peaceable as a saint. We won't need more than a couple of men there. But how about the Bradley outfit? Well, you'll find that an easy collection, too. Bradley was killed at Lookout Mountain. His widow's running the place alone. Well, thanks, Ashley. You've been a lot of help. We'll have easy pickings. Glad to have been a service, Captain. Good night. Good night. What's the situation? The sentry's on duty all night, John. I gotta get out of here and warn those ranchers. Sure, and you will get out. I got something to take care of that sentry while you're getting over the wall. Oh! Who goes there? Why, it's just me, partner, old Jed Calicut from Missouri. I'd walk around and get a little... Say, do you know any Spanish? I can't read the label on this bottle. It says something about Augua there or something. It looks like brandy. Smells like brandy. It is brandy. Thanks. Maybe you can read it better. My good fellow, I can't read Spanish, but it looks like brandy to me. Really? Is it brandy? Can't tell yet. <coughs> no, it's cough medicine. Shucks, me without no cough. <coughs> Pardon it. You got a bad cold, eh? Better take a little more of that. It was brandy all the time. You never knew it, you backwoods blockhead.
You're drunk. Go to your quarters. Oh, Somebody warned him. Maybe those bushwhackers have spies, too. Not even a mangy cat left. How did it get here? When we find out, we'll know who warned those ranchers last night. To my way of thinking, there's only one man who could have sent the information out of here. Ashley. Ashley? But he's a Union sympathizer. He fought for the North. Why do you suspect him? Because he's the only man besides myself who saw the list of names. All right. We'll put Ashley to a test. Bring him in. Oh, Ashley. Holden wants to see you right away. Ashley, I have a special job for you. I found this posted in my own office here. The fellow who did that had nerve. He'll need all he's got before I get through with him. That isn't all. He's been spying for the bushwhackers. Any idea who it is, sir? Yes. That's where you come in, Ashley. Before I go after this man, I want you to arrest his outside accomplice. Who is that? Richard Terry, you're to take six men and leave at once. Yes, sir. Post yourself near the Terry plantation and watch him. I declare to goodness, Dick. Anyone would think you wanted to get killed, moving all these munitions right under the troopers' noses. I know it's risky, Jenny, but it has to be done. Can't you even wait till it gets dark? That's just it. The men are gathering tonight, and I promise to have the guns and powder on hand. You know what would happen if you were caught? If you're so worried, hurry up and get these out of sight while we bring the rest. Hurry, Dick, hurry. Don't wait for anything more. I've got to get that powder. Please, Dick. Come on, boy, hurry up. Too late. 
they've seen you. I've got to get this wagon through. There he goes. Cut across the canyon and head him off at the crossroads. Terry's trying to make his getaway in the wagon. Ashley's after him. He sent us across this canyon to head him off the crossroads. All right, follow me. Down. You got me all wrong, Dick. I'm your friend. Now take my horse and get to the hills, quick. Yes, and let you shoot me in the back? You think I'd give you this chance if I didn't mean it? I don't believe any Yankee. Least of all, one of Holden's outfit. Now the troopers are coming. You better get on that horse and get out of here while you can. Sorry you didn't believe me. Well, Ashley, I see you made good. Search the wagon. Uh. Well, this wagon's full of guns and powder. You know what that means, Terry. Sure. Get it over with. My friend here can hardly wait to use his gun on me. I'm going to give you a chance to escape. Take the fastest one of your horses. We'll give you a chance. Fair and square. Fair and square. Come on up, Ashley. All right, Rep. Let's see you ride. Ready? Aim! Drop those guns. Drop them! We shoot the first man that moves. All your horses, let's get them. Steady, Jed. This way.
go. You go back and bring up the troop. The rest of you dismount. And keep them holding up. They think they've got us cornered. Now's our chance. Can you travel? Sure. Can you? Didn't you find him, Snowflake? Oh, no. Don't you worry, Miss Jenny. We sure bound to find him soon. Oh, Snowflake, maybe he's wounded or dead. Oh, oh no, Miss Virginia. Marsh Dick ain't dead. Uh, he just hiding in the brush, foxy-like, to fool him. It's no use, Snowflake. I heard those shots. That Blaine, there must have been a death on this plantation. Must have been, sir. child, we just singing the fool in the Yanks what might be around. Come on, woman. We got to keep tabbing. Take that grin off your face, black boy. We got a death in the family. Praise the Lord. Escape. John Ashley is our friend after all, Jenny. John Ashley? Our friend? The best. He and his partner risked their lives to give me a chance for mine. Oh, and after what I said to him, I told him that... Brother, nobody leaves this place until we do. John, are you badly hurt? That isn't serious. Don't you believe him, Mom. He's half dead right now and ain't got sense enough to know it. Oh, I'm just tired. You'll be tired tomorrow when gangrene sets in. Snowflake, drop everything and go for the doctor. <coughs> Mandy, bring hot water and some clean linen. But Virginia, you must It's my get... turn to say please. Women are beyond my comprehension. They just brought her brother's body home, and now, sir, she's nursing the Yank who killed him. Well, to the ladies. Here. Yes, so we'd have plenty of warning if them troopers was coming. Come, there's a 
the hiding place. They'll never find you. Gentlemen, these men saved my brother's life today. I rely on your honor. Miranda Place! Outside, sir. Search the place. Seem to be here, sir. Very well. Stand by. Ashley, Calicut. I'll give you just ten seconds to come out of your hiding place underneath the bar. Ready? They got us in a blind canyon. Aim! Prisoners, advance! We'll get help to you, Dick and I. Prisoners, fall in. Untie them. You're to be court-martialed at seven in the morning. You have the night to prepare your defense. If there is a defense for mutiny, firing upon and wounding your brother troopers, aiding the enemy, and desertion, Give them the lantern. That guardhouse won't hold them. It hasn't been repaired since that blacksmith nearly got away. They'll escape. Isn't that what we want? Oh, Harrell, I'm going to try you out for promotion. You are to command the guard tonight. Thank you, sir. If you come up to my expectations, you'll be a sergeant tomorrow. Any orders, sir? Post two marksmen. Wait for the prisoners to escape. And then shoot to kill. 
Yes, sir. And that's the man we started out the dose with his own medicine. I'm sorry, Jed. Oh, never mind about it. What I'm feeling bad over is Miss Virginia. She'll sure miss you. Isn't there someone who's going to miss you too, Jed? A wife or a sweetheart? You darn tootin'. They'll both miss me. That's why I didn't go back to Missouri. Unexpected honor. Why didn't you let me know you were coming, Governor? General, I'm not making a social call. This is an official investigation. There have been complaints from your district. I'm sorry to hear that, Governor. But you're nonetheless welcome, sir. Very grave complaints, such as the shooting of defenseless prisoners. If your excellency will pardon me for a few minutes, I'll be at your service, sir. Sit down, sir. But the guard, sir. Sir, do you realize you're addressing the governor of Texas? Your pardon, Excellency. Well, while there's light, there's hope. Something might happen before morning. That's exactly what I'm worried about. Well, after a day like this, I'm too tired to worry. I couldn't lift a finger. Not if my life depended on it. Hey! Just like this outfit, expect a man to spend his last night sleeping on a thing like this. It's all clear. This is our last chance. Some of you men have fought the carpetbaggers with me. Others of you have just stood by. Now, I don't blame these. We've all had enough bloodshed in the last four years. But now, if you call yourself Southerners, you've all got to fight. And I'll tell you why. Today, John actually risked his life to save mine. Yes, and that isn't all he's done. Ever since he's been back here, hated by all of us, he's been our friend. Who warned you when Holden was going to take your cattle? Yes, and who'd let you get away when Holden was going to have you shot? Ashley! Are we going to stand by and let him be murdered for what he's done? But we ain't acquainted with no men who got guns. But I know plenty of boys who got razors. Now as to your relation with the people. There seems to be much bitter feeling. Well, naturally, sir, there were some who didn't realize the war was over. But now, with reconstruction well underway, I feel sure I can promise there'll be no more trouble, sir. Positively, no more. Not a sign of life except the light in Holden's office. Come on, before he gets one of his bright ideas. Hold on. Oh, all right, if that's the way you feel about it, you go first. You know what you said about Holden having a bright idea? Well, this is too easy. You're right. Let's tackle her the hard way. We can't wait for any more. All right. Let's go, Texas.
shoot, you'll wake up the whole barracks. Let's try and make it over the wall. Those walls. They'd just be good targets. Afraid there's no getting out of these barracks without a pass the commanding officer. You've hit it. Well, I must admit, you've cleared yourself of the charges. Except the one of diverting tax funds to your personal use. If Your Excellency will check the books. Your clerk keeps the books. He can continue to keep them. I refer to the fact that all your collections have been in Confederate money. But uh some of the recent collections have been in greenbacks, haven't they, Tucker? Yes, sir. We have several hundred dollars on hand, ready for transmission to Washington. Well, that seems to exonerate you completely. And considering the difficulties you've told me about, you haven't done badly. Thank you, sir. What was that? Perhaps the prisoners we captured tonight are trying to escape. What prisoners? Two bushwhackers Just as you are, gentlemen. We'll shoot the first man who moves. Turn around, carpetbagger. Don't get any ideas. It's all I can do to keep from pulling the trigger now. When I think of all the men you shot in the back. What do you want? We want safe conduct out of here, and you're the only one that can give it to us. No, we don't want to pass. You're the safe conduct we want. You're going along with us. Like this. Now, just act natural. Let's have one of those smiles of yours. Wait a minute, John. There's something else we should take. Have you seen anything of them? No. Well, keep on looking. I report to Holden. Come on, get over there. Your greenbacks are going back to the folks you taxed them out of. Hold that trap! Stop it! Get in here! Come on, Jed, let's get going. Just a minute, you men. You've shown me what I came here to learn about your commanding officers. As governor of Texas, I'll guarantee your safety. There they are. Holden. I don't know, Dick, but this is Governor. And I suppose you're in command here, sir. I am. What's the meaning of all this? We came here to prevent the murder of Captain Ashley. Captain? Yes, sir. I was an officer in the Union Army. It seems to me that your complaints have been proved to be well founded. And I promise you that if after an impartial investigation it is shown that you are justified in your attack tonight, the troopers will be disbanded. Now go to your homes and set an example of law and order. And give me your word, you'll appear when sent for. I was in the Union Army too, sir. And a good forager, I imagine. <laughs> I sure was. 